Trolley X of mass 1.2 kilograms travels at 8 meters per second east and collides with trolley Y, which is initially at rest. Ignore all friction effect. The velocity time graph below, or I've put it over there, um, shows the velocity of trolley X during and after the collision. Okay, so let's have a look here. This, this trolley was traveling at 8 meters per second, and they said that that was to the east, okay? So east is positive on this graph. They're making east positive. Then it collides with another trolley. So you see how it slows down over here. So this part here is where they are busy crashing into each other, this part over here, okay? And then once the crash is complete, it all settles again and it carries on moving at four meters per second, but it's still going east. How do I know that it's going east? Because this four is still positive. If it was going west, it would have dropped underneath to the negative y-axis, okay? And you would have had like a negative four here. Right, so do they tell us if the objects collide? I mean, do the objects stick together? No, 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 the velocity time growth, no, they don't say anything there. Okay, so first question, state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Before I go get the proper definition, let's quickly talk about this. Um, the conservation of linear momentum is when you use this formula, um, m1 v1 plus m2 v2 initial, initial. Your teacher might, some questions you might use a and b instead of one and two equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. So what it tells us is that the total momentum of the system, because remember this is momentum, so it says that the momentum of object number one plus the momentum of object number two initially, meaning before the crash, is equal to the momentum of object number one plus the momentum of object number two after the crash. So they say that the momentum the, men, the conservation of momentum. So the momentum is conserved. So the momentum in the beginning is equal to the momentum afterwards, okay? Now, let's go get the proper definition. Here we go. In an isolated or closed system, you don't have to say both of those, you can choose one of them. It just means, by the way, if it's isolated or closed, it means that there's no other forces like friction or things like that. And that's also why they said, yeah, ignore friction. There's no applied forces, nothing like that. There's just two objects crashing into each other or moving apart, but there's no um, friction forces and things like that. They said that in a system like that, the total linear momentum is conserved or you can say remains constant. And that's why we said that the momentum on this side was equal to the momentum on that side. This question here says, calculate the magnitude, so that, does, that means only the size, not the direction, of the velocity of y immediately after the collision. Okay, so it's easy, you just say m1 v1, or no, we're not gonna use one and one, we're gonna use x initially plus y, initially equals to x final plus y final. Then choose a direction as positive. I'm gonna choose to the east as positive. Okay, so the x mass is 1.2. It's a very easy formula, this. Uh, what is velocity x before the crash? Well, that was eight. And it's a positive eight because they said it was east and we chose east as positive. Now the mass of trolley Y, 0 0.5. They said it was originally at rest, so that'll be a zero. Now X, the mass doesn't change. What is the velocity of X after the crash? Four. This part here is during the crash. They're probably gonna ask us things about that later, like force, there we go. Um, and that's where we're gonna use formulas like F net delta T equals to delta P and all of that stuff that comes here. And that's where you need time, Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> so, um, and I haven't even done this question. Like I'm literally doing it for the first time now with you, but you just, as you do these questions, you learn to see what they're gonna ask. Alrighty, and then it says, um, then the mass of Y, 0 0.5, and then we don't know what its final velocity is. What I'm gonna do now is just type this part on my calculator. That gives 9.6. Then I'm gonna type this on my calculator. That would be 4.8 and then 0 0.5 velocity of y final. 
I'm going to take the 4.8 over, so we end up with um, 9.6 minus 4.8 equals to 0 0.5. And then um, if you minus these two, you actually also get 4.8 equals to 0 0.5 V y final or v of y and then if you divide by 0 0.5 you end up with 9.6 and you don't have to give a direction because they said magnitude so you just say that this question says what is the average net force now listen carefully that trolley x exerts on trolley y um okay so it doesn't really matter I mean, if you chose either way, you're going to get the same answer because of Newton's third law. But correct, the correct way is they want to know what is the net force that trolley X exerts on trolley Y. So we're going to use trolley Y's information because we want to want, we want to know what happened to trolley Y. So we can use this formula. Of course, there's other ways of writing that formula. You could write it like this if you wanted to immediately. It doesn't really matter. In fact, I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to divide the T onto the other side. And then there's other ways as well. I mean, we know that delta P is the same as M, and then in brackets, VF minus VI. You could even write it as v MVF minus MVI. You know, we've showed all these different ways of writing it. It's all the same thing. They, it's the same formula. It's not like you have to choose which one depending on the situation. It's the same thing. So in fact, let me just show you, this is from the memo. So on the memo, this is what they give us. So I just took this one and then I just put this at the bottom. So we ended up with um, that. And then I'm gonna replace the delta P with all of that. There we go. Um, this F is a subscript, sorry. Okay, now we're gonna do this on trolley Y because they wanna know on trolley Y. They wanna, they're, not, they're talking about like, what did trolley Y experience? So, uh, F net is what we are trying to calculate. So the mass of trolley Y is 0 0.5. Okay, I'm gonna run out of space here. here. So it's um, 0 0.5. What is the final velocity of trolley Y? Uh, it is, we got it as, where did we write it? I think we got 9.6. Yeah, um, yes, 9.6. And we got a positive answer, so that was to the right. Oh, I should choose a direction as positive. <gasps> 9.6 minus um, the original velocity, I mean the original mass is 0 0.5 and the original velocity was zero. And then the time for the collision, now this is the collision part, like how long did the collision last for? There, so you could say 20.2 minus 20.1 or you could just say 0 0.1 seconds. Now, if you go type all that in, it's 48 Newtons. Now I'm not gonna give a direction because they said calculate the magnitude of. So it's just gonna be 48 Newtons. Last question says, is the collision elastic or inelastic? Uh, five marks. This is a absolute giveaway of five marks because if we've learned about elastic, inelastic, we should know that it's just a calculation that we have to go do. There's nothing challenging about it at all. So all we're gonna do is the following. I want you to think about before the collision, before, and after, and I just want you to go calculate the kinetic energy of each object. Um, so let's do the kinetic energy of X, and then we'll do the kinetic energy of Y. So we'll do X, we'll do Y, and then we'll do the total. And then we'll also do the same on this side. And then we'll just see if the total is the same for both. If it is, we call that elastic. If it's not the same, we call it inelastic. Okay, so we're gonna go get the kinetic energy. Remember, that's what we do for inelastic and um, elastic, is we go get the kinetic energy. So that's half mv squared. So half the mass of x is 1.2. Its velocity there was eight. Uh, what's that gonna be? What's that gonna be? 64 times 1.2. Okay, KF just use a calculator, bruh. 38.4, and that is measured in joules. It's a type of energy, and it is a scalar, meaning that it has no direction. You do not put a direction for energy. Now, for object Y, its mass was 0 0.5. Its original velocity was zero, so this is just gonna give us zero. Add these two numbers together, and what do you get? 38.4. So that is the total energy before the collision. Okay, now we're gonna look at the total energy after the collision, so for object X, it was going at four meters per second. 
So that's 9.6 joules. And then for object Y, it was going at its final velocity we calculated as 9.6. And that is 23.04. Add these two numbers together, 32.64. Okay, are these two numbers the same? No, they're not. So that is inelastic, inelastic.